Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. If you and your dog are adventurous and fit, and your dog loves to run, then the up-and-coming sport of bike joring might be a good fit. Already well-established in Europe, dog-powered mountain biking is growing in popularity in the U.S. too. As a matter of fact, it is becoming so popular, even here in Alaska, that our old company, Alaska Dog Works, has been the title sponsor for the Alaska Dog Works Dryland Derby for the last four years. We love to bike jor with our sled dogs and we use it to help train them up to be on our bigger mushing teams. But today we are going to learn all about the sport of bike joring and share some information from our friends Brad and Sarah Casing who we have interviewed in the past on this very podcast. <music> From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello and welcome to Dog Works Radio. I'm your host, Michelle Forto, and I am the lead trainer of Alaska Dog Works, where we help humans and their dogs have better relationships. Today, we are talking about one of my absolute favorite dog sports, bike joring. In its infancy, sled dog racers created bike joring. It was an ideal way to train and maintain their dog's fitness levels outside of the snowy wind winter months. Gradually, the pursuit caught on with a wider group of enthusiasts and competitive bike joring began to take shape. Bike joring fanatic Sarah Casing is a veterinarian and leader of the Arizona chapter of Canacross USA. Alongside her husband Brad Casing, developed an interest in the sport a few years back. She describes how in the last decade or so the sport has gained traction. Race events are growing at a local, nationwide, and international level. In 2019, Sarah and Brad represented the United States as elite bike joring and canacross competitors at the dryland world championships in sweden she explained that even on a less competitive level it's such a beneficial way for people to enjoy active time with their dogs so how does bike joring work in the competitive world of bike joring a team consists of the rider along with one or two dogs the dogs will pull out in front of the bike Competitions take place on off-road, soft dirt trails that are relatively flat and free from problematic obstacles. Most racers involve individual time trials. These allow for competitors to negotiate the course without worrying about others in their way. This is a fast-paced sport and not for the faint-hearted. What gear do you need to bike, Jor? If you already have a mountain bike, you'll have saved yourself a significant initial outlay. Given the types of trails you'll be riding on, you don't need a bike with flashy suspension. It will, however, need reliable brakes and a solid frame. After all, it could have two strong dogs attached to it. Your dog will need a well-fitting harness specifically designed for bike joring. This ensures the appropriate distribution of strain across their body. When running or cycling with your dog, even if it's not competitively, never attach the leash directly to their collar. This puts way too much direct pressure on the throat. You'll also need a rigid attachment for the bike, which helps prevent the leash from tangling in the wheels and a long length bungee style leash. It's not just about the gear either, as Casing explains. It can be tricky to find appropriate and accommodating trails as many are multi-use. You need to be safe, polite, and considerate of other trail users. Ensuring your dog is well behaved and under control will minimize any problems. What dogs are suited to bike joring? Dogs that love running 
and readily pull out front, make enthusiastic bike drawing athletes. They might already be canacross participants. Your dog should be fit, powerful, and confident. Attaching a nervous or reactive dog to a fast-moving bike would be a recipe for disaster. Dogs that excel at mushing like Siberian Huskies and other northern breeds are obvious candidates for the sport. There are, however, a wide range of bigger dogs that take part in club rides. Casing explains that her dogs were bred specifically to excel in dry land racing. They're very athletic with lots of endurance and enthusiasm, and their natural sled dog skills shine through. She also recognizes the benefits that her dogs get from the sport. Bike drawing keeps my dogs physically active and mentally stimulated, she says. The improved blood flow of oxygen to the brain and the endorphins released are wonderful things for the mind and body. At home, my dogs aren't bored. They feel satisfied and content. Before you get started, your dog should have a health check from your vet and you should build up their fitness levels gradually. Fast-paced bike drawing isn't recommended for puppies with their soft-growing bones, small breeds, and senior dogs with mobility problems. Even if your dog isn't suited to this fast-paced, strength-related sport, it doesn't mean they can't join you on bike rides. You can get them used to traveling in a suitable bike carrier or running at the side of the bike at a slower pace. What training is required to bike draw? For dogs that don't have that intense drive but do enjoy running, it can initially be tricky to get them to want to stay in front, says Casing. Finding others that are active in the sport can be immensely beneficial. Initially having another bike during team or even just a runner in front can ignite the instinctual desire to chase. This often motivates your dog to go ahead. Mastering consistent and encouraging commands is also vital for a successful bike drawing partnership. Your dog should at least understand commands for controlling their pace, turning left, right, and straight on. The bond and trust shared with your dog will grow through your bike drawing journey. I'd like to give bike drawing a try. Where can I find out more? If you can find a local club, you'll get support and guidance from more experienced bike drawing enthusiasts. However, because the sport is still growing, you might not always be lucky enough to have an established club nearby. Casing recommends networking with like-minded individuals on social media. Often Canacross clubs will also have members that enjoy biking with their dogs too. You can find out more about the competitive side of things through the International Sled Dog Racing Association. In Arizona, Sarah and Brad also run the Trail Dog Association of Arizona. Their focus is on dry land and sled sports, but they also encourage backpacking with dogs. With a bit of encouragement and practice, you and your dog could soon be hurling down a bike trail together, heading toward your first medal. Did you guys know that right here at Alaska Dog Works, we train adventure dog sports? It's an entire chapter devoted to sports like bike drawing, canacross, dog mushing, ski drawing, backpacking, and much more. If you're interested in adventure dog sports, give us a call, check out our social channels, or send us a private message. We'd be happy to talk with you about that opportunity. So what did you guys think? Are you willing to give the sport a try? Share your pictures in the comments section on our social channels. And one last thing, did you know the single best thing you can do for our show is to tell your family and friends how you listen? Who knows? They might just become a rabid listener just like you. Remember, I'm Michelle Forto for DogWorks Radio and First Paw Media. See you next time. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. 
Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Fordow and her team has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com.